many years to be here within this organization as a female. Anybody can ask that. Yeah. Who's that one person? Good afternoon again. I won't narrow it down to one person, mm -hmm. one individual, because there are so many giants that inspired me. But more notably, the women that ascended to the high ranks in this organization, mm -hmm. and those females are our newly appointed Assistant Commissioner Delderese Ferguson, mm -hmm. but more importantly, our two female Deputy Commissioners, Deputy Commissioner our first deputy commissioner is Melody Delancey, retired, mm -hmm. and our serving female deputy commissioner, Mrs. Loretta Mackey. Mm -hmm. They were, I, I personally were really inspired by them, mm -hmm. and not only that, more pointedly, our deputy commissioner, Ms. Mackey, has also held on as acting commissioner. She did. So yeah. that deserves much... Um, Applause. Yeah, applause. she did. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Well, I, I always um, reference my joining and the person that pushed me. Mm -hmm. I always give credit to my mother. But internally in the force, I think persons that have passed, um, of course, uh, our Nita Cobra, who still serves in the capacity of, of reserve. ACP, mm -hmm. but I have some, some women from early on whose shoulders I think I stand on, mm -hmm. and I go all the way back to the Central Division. Um, we had Sergeant Adderley who was there, who always pushed. Um, I had here at the at the at headquarters once I was transferred. I had great men mm -hmm. who always push you to do your best and better than than you would do. Um, I've worked with a number of, of commissioners. Um, Ellison Greenslade, who always challenged you daily uh, to do your best. Um, Paul Farkerson, who was the commissioner at the time when I went through my valley um, experience, my mm -hmm. illness. He was the commissioner at the time who said, I'm going to look at your ability mm -hmm. and not, go not what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. And so I remember him challenging me every day with, with work and, and different stuff to achieve, achieve it. And mm -hmm. so I owe a lot of a debt of gratitude to him. And then, of course, our uh, ladies that are with us, Ms. Uh, Ms. Marty, of course, who is the deputy commissioner, who brings a wealth of experience yeah. from, um, uh, from the Grand Mama Division and who holds mightily the position mm -hmm. of deputy commissioner. And then, of course, Mrs. Miller Adelancy, who just went recently, and my good friend, um, Carol Bo, Bo. Yeah. Carolyn Bo. You know, she always was a jewel person, but mm -hmm. she always wanted the best for you. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I really hold where I am today, first to my mother, then to the mothers that nurtured me in the organization, to where I am today. Mm -hmm. I stand on their shoulders. Yeah. And I'm proud of, of what I've achieved and what they've um, really pushed me to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, I have three persons that I have in my, that I hold daily to me, and those persons would be I call her Mama Mada. Frankie Mada Bay Mada. She was one of the persons who brought me into the com community policing world. Mm -hmm. And then I had Miss Stephanie Demerit. Oh, no. If you know Miss Demerit, yes, yes. you know <laughs> strong, strong-minded. <laughs> she was always someone that you would want to emulate. Right. And then I have Miss Talinda Mizek. Yes, I've learned so much from her. Mm -hmm. um, strong, strong, strong. She is mm -hmm. someone that, you know, who is always there for persons when they need you. Mm -hmm. She is always willing to teach. She is a mother figure. She's just someone that you would like to, you know, mm -hmm. emulate. So mm -hmm. those three persons I, I look to as strong women who, who impact me in this organization. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the person that really impacted me is my mom. Also, the organization of us. She was a pull of strength. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as females on the job, we, we go through stuff. You need advice. She was there for me. Wonderful. She always encouraged me. Today, she's my biggest supporter. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. You know, so I, I, I really give thanks for that support, that strong support in my life that encouraged me 
um, to do to do well, to be the person that I am today. Good day. I would say on the door up, the persons that have impacted me most. Firstly, retired um, Chief Superintendent Ms. Lou Rowe. She has been my greatest inspiration, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I feel like she looks out for me. And then when um, I would say the current Deputy Commissioner of Police, Ms. Loretta Mackey, I thank God for her. Wonderful. Neely. Oh. <laughs> She's telling us to home, y'all go home, and then you'll be her back here. We come from 7 o'clock in the morning, you'll be there. She probably from 6, 5.30, mm -hmm. and we left her here after 12. Mm -hmm. So also, when we see this person travel, or uh, she never us have kids, um, we all get a couple of dollars, we bring her back and go. She for y'all while they go, and they'll be much cheaper. And <laughs> she's been uh, very helpful, very, very helpful um, so far, mm -hmm. um, holding her hand by hand mm -hmm. through the organization. Okay. That's Miss Matthew. Any? Yeah, I think um, Gomez. Oh, Gomez. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I won't be so bold to call names uh -huh. yes. because in my 18 years, 17 years serving, I have had the privilege to work under several giants mm -hmm. who I call um, female officers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, from the ranks of corporal, go straight up. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired by them all, the way how they deal with persons. And I won't call any names because I really don't want to get in any problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's good. Uh, for me, um, I would say it was Ms. Allardyce Strong. We were young officers in CID. She was tough, right? And I think that's part of where I got my toughness from. But mm -hmm. underneath that toughness, she was soft. She had a heart and uh, was very compassionate because as young females back in CID, working those long hours, she was there. And she said, no, 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 go get it done, Mackie. Come, 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 come. Mm -hmm. But uh, just like a mother figure. And so I realized that she was being sh strict with us and she was being firm, but she was being fair and she was giving us the opportunity because I don't think she wanted us as young officers to come across as being weak or, you know, smiling with us. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's... You know, semi-military organization, that's important because you can send the wrong message. Mm -hmm. But she was a great pillar strength. And Ms. Cobra, because I started playing softball when I first came into the organization with Cipriana McKinney, God rest her soul. Mm -hmm. And Miss um, Cobra was there and persons like Harry Stewart. Mm -hmm. And they were strong women. And, mm -hmm. you know, they had their children and they were there assisting with the softball team. But it was more like a community effort, you know, to see the women out there, what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And Palm Carol was on the bike. Mm -hmm. So they were like big mm -hmm. sisters and yeah. helping you along the way. And then um, there were men, like um, ACP Ferguson said, there were men who were like, you know, they were mentors to you. Mm -hmm. And each commissioner, I believe, we had in the independent right. Bahamas, there was something that you could take away that, that he had. You know, mm -hmm. Mr. BK Bonnie was all about discipline. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Um, Parkinson was a community policing person. Together. You know, and mm -hmm. then Mr. Mr. Reginald Ferguson, he was the no Johnson. Yeah. If you know him, yeah. no Johnson, no corruption on him. That was all about mm -hmm. him. And then Mr. Greenslade. I call him the charismatic leader, mm -hmm. uh, but he was, uh, well, we had him in Grand Bahama for like seven years. Mm -hmm. And he was always the person, Maki, you have to be firm, but be fair. And then when I got inspector, I remember him saying, Maki, it's time to learn administration. 
So I would say to the female officers, learn administration yeah. and the organization. Mm -hmm. Operations is critical because mm -hmm. if you're going to be a good commander, like how Chief Superintendent Porter is at the station, you need to know administration yeah. and you need to know operation. Mm -hmm. And so I learned this not just from females, I learned this from the, the males, the males well. too. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then now we have a um, Commissioner Paul, we had Mr. Anthony Ferguson. Mm -hmm. He was more easy going, but yeah. don't cross him wrong. Yeah. <laughs> he can cut you down quickly. Yeah. And then Mr. Uh, Mr. Paul, our uh, conserving commissioner, Absolutely. what I like about him is that he, he brings three, four, I think, for me. This is how I see it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to offend anybody, but he has the operation, he has the administration, and then he has the academic mm -hmm. side of it. So when you put that together, you know, you have that strong, and he, yes, he could be strong stuff, but he has a... So other side, that yes, the, to him, and he'll be, and like even now, sitting as the deputy commissioner, I might be getting ahead of myself, but when he comes to discipline, and I said, so this, he said, Mackie, um, he's up. <laughs> <laughs> I should say that, he's so what I would say. <laughs> so he said, Mackie, he's up, and Mackie, not just kid, Mackie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I appreciate, all, appreciate all of them. And then just like Nick was saying with um, ACB Ferguson, you know, we did a lot of protocol stuff together mm -hmm. and a lot of persons didn't know that. And then she, where she worked in the travel, international, uh, international travel, and travel and so when you went on a course, she was that person. And so we always communicated and then when we came to NASA, you know, it, it was a good synergy and then I ended up going away on training and she went to Grand Bahama and fill in and took over for the um, community committee that came in from the IACP. Mm -hmm. And so she was there. And so, but she has that crazy work ethic style, but I'm not too cool with it. <laughs> so let me just say that she, you know, wants the job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So dad. she yeah. just said that, you know, <laughs> and she would have to give thanks to her husband. Yeah, yeah. Put him with his Yeah. And so you, you ask the question who inspires you. Mm -hmm. And I think um, for, for me, um, Ms. Maki as well, uh -huh. and others who have husbands who are part of the organization, for them to allow you to expand mm -hmm. and to be yourself, mm -hmm. even when it comes to you superseding them in rank, right. and they still hold your hand mm -hmm. and support you, you have to be grateful for that. Yeah. And I, and I want to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Chief Superintendent General Ferguson, the officer in charge of the Southeastern Division. He's always been that great supporter. Mm -hmm. That's what inspires us. Yes. There's so many people. Yeah. And even um, even when you think about, um, you, as we've all talked about, those same people, mm -hmm. right. but there's some young people in the organization <laughs> yes. that inspire you yeah. to go on. Even, when you, yeah. even though they know a little more than you, mm -hmm. they will help to hold your yeah. hand yeah. and show you how yeah. it's done without taking any yeah. credit. Mm -hmm. And so, Shout out to all of them as well <laughs> that allow us to be who we are. You yeah. have children. But, yeah. <laughs> if I may, you have to be honest. Having That's spent it. 24 years in CID, wow. I must say that there were some powerful, strong women that came up Definitely. in that mm -hmm. division. Mm -hmm. And they, I won't call them. They know who they are. Yes. I don't name them, but they were true inspiration mm -hmm. for us. So, to not just me, but the entire organization. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to say a shout out to them. Yes, yeah. they know who they are. They know yeah. who they are. Yeah. Well, well, whilst I've I been using this platform, um, I. I thank God for my mother. She has been that pillar of pillar of strength mm -hmm. for me over the years. And there's, like I said, there's a story behind what you see today. Mm -hmm. But when I came into the organization, um, there were females. And, and let me say, Miss Ms. Markey, what you see here today, this is something that she insisted on us doing. Mm -hmm. Not just a formal interview with just focusing on her, but she wanted to bring all ranks and files together what? to unify us and for us to talk about, have this discussion today. So thank you, Ms. Maki. Mm -hmm. I, I can't take credit for this. This is, this is mm -hmm. you. And so when we look at, when I think about uh, persons who would have inspired me over the years, I think about um, Elaine Sands, who is, who is, who is mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, I think about um, Chris Lee Skipping, Janet McKenzie, yes. um, Ms. Ms. Ferguson. I, I, I've known her from the time that I came within the organization. She's been kind, and, and I watch her through her 
um, with the less experience and admired her, her strength over the years. Um, and so when we talk about females and we talk about persons who would have inspired us, they are the persons as well as um, Mr. Stephen Dean, yes. Anthony, yes. Um, um, oh Lord, Anthony Wall. I Mr. Roll, yes, yes, he's a, an exceptional um, supervisor on the Peters, um, Mr. Ramsey, Leonard Ramsey. But the one person that we, I can't um, continue on with this conversation without mentioning is, and we forget her sometimes, is Sandra Miller. All right, yeah. Did yeah. you see her today? Sandra Miller, I, I was shy, and Sandra Miller, she has an inspector, she made sure that <laughs> everywhere she said she said Pinda, um this is a ministry you go away so everywhere where you saw sandra Mill, i was there she pushed me on the stage when i when i didn't even want to i just because she had so much knowledge and coming from cdu at a time you know she was um um she was a giant in in fraud mm -hmm. and so she would she mastered that and so i would just sit in the audience she used to be like Pinda, you are if you never heard this before but i was always in awe mm -hmm. she was the one who pushed me yes. over the years she always said if i don't teach you i can teach you the right way right. and i i stand here today on her shoulders even though she's sometimes she's oftentimes forgotten right. yes. that is the the person who honestly pushed me mm -hmm. um and, and what you see here part of what you see here today is because of of Sandra Miller giving credit where credit is due. There's so many other individuals yes. out there, but we could be here all day talking about yeah. these individuals, so we have to get into the conversation. Yeah. And let me let me talk about work ethics. I have to commend Millie. Millie is is one. If you ask her to do something, she can get that job. It doesn't matter the time. Mm -hmm. She can make sure that she stays in the trenches with you, and we can get the job done. Case of applying the tree light ceremony. <laughs> she was the one, you know. Yes, Miss Pinder. Never, never would. Always obedient, always doing whatever it is that you ask her to do it in a respectful way. And so I commend um, um, Corporal Millie as well for her, her work ethics and continue. She's a mother, a student. Yes. She, she's here every day. I, I can't think of a time that Millie ever called in system from the time that I've been in, in the office. You can see the synergy. The yeah. You can see the synergy between her, yourself, and Inspector Marky. Marky. Ms. Oh my God. Marky and Marky. <laughs> He's very. I I learned to know him over there because I we we have that synergy. I told I'm lost, and I said, Lost, and you realize that. The reason why we all get along in this office is because we all special and crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and Neely, I could see it. So yeah. Neely and Neely and Savannah, you know, um, just so you know, uh, Macy Ferguson, they inspire me uh -huh. with exercising. Why if God Neely was so that's, um, yeah. the, um, Neely is my exercise partner, I'm uh, Maki. Yes. But uh, let them know now. When it comes to jogging, I'm going to be them. It would be when Maki got it out. But Neely, Neely walks very fast. She has a, so she get me. So what I do, I start jogging and uh -huh. throw off a game. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, my. Neely the one that everybody left me behind. She's, she stayed with me. The rest of them, oh, my goodness. You buy one of the two? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what else did you win? You want to come in our office? Yeah, she did everything. Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run back up the way. Yeah. So the next question I have as females, we can be emotional sometimes, and and we we seem to be more compassionate towards um you know um, um be more lenient towards discipline. And, and this, well, I'm not sure what you said, but I, I, I have to phrase this question. What do you say? What do you say? I'm not so the, the question is, how do how do you as leaders and future leaders of this organization deal with the stresses of being that disciplinarian within this organization? Where we are, this is a male child organization. We have to discipline males and females, adult males and females. How do you deal with it, honestly, in this discipline organization? It's not I'll save you for last year. <laughs> <Yeah. You, laughs> how do we deal with it? If I may say in the words of our deputy commissioner, uh -huh. you must be firm uh -huh. but fair mm. in dealing with, in dealing with, in carrying out disciplinary um, issues. Mm. You can be soft-hearted, mm -hmm. but you have to know when you need to be firm-hearted. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that, I think we need to strike the balance between soft-hearted and knowing to be firm. 
And how do you do that? Well, you wait on a case by case Cases. issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. For me, that's mm -hmm. what I would do. Mm -hmm. It's case by case. Anybody else? Um, I'll speak someone like myself being mm -hmm. a newly appointed, appointed inspector with 14 years in the organization. When you have to discipline persons or how to speak to someone who is who may have less time than you, who's who's um you know a senior person, you have to be able to relate to that person. You mm -hmm. know, it's not always about uh, being this strong dominant person. Right. You have to be able to be relatable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't always have to be that hammer, that hammer. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's all about knowing an individual and being able to do some stuff like mm -hmm. you say, police force yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I think um, as you grow with your organization, you learn from your past and how Absolutely. other persons will deal with certain situations. Mm -hmm. So you get to um, deal with those things a, a bit different. Mm -hmm. I say just know the facts, of course, because once you begin to advance in the organization, they, it's going to come across your, your desk. The fact that we are emotional, our emotions yeah. get caught up. That's yeah. the first thing that yeah. happens. So I would say step back, get the facts, get a report. Even though you're getting a verbal uh, report, mm -hmm. you say to, to that sergeant or that corporal, that new corporal who I just to put the principal on the chart, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> let me get your report, please. Yes. And when they then write all of that and you have everything in front of you, you're able then to make a decis uh, decision on mm -hmm. it because then you, you know the facts. And just like with um, the ones among us who have children, when, when our kids need to be disciplined, we decide if we're going to strike the rod or we're going to give them a chance. And it's really how that plays out as well. Mm -hmm. um, being firm, you let them know but your very opposition makes you firm. Mm -hmm. But the fair part is that, that, that thing that we still are trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> there, there are some things that if you think, you don't have to think wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you was in that same position. <laughs> yeah. You don't have yeah. to think now. Yeah. You know that you were in that same position. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, the, the phrase, be firm but fair. Mm -hmm. And know that the penalty is in your hand. Mm -hmm. That you could allow the officer a blind, like we say. Mm -hmm. Or you could, you know. But those things where you have to take action, you be very fair with the individual mm -hmm. and you let them know. Don't put that on the corporal. Don't put that on the subject. Right. You let them know based on the policy mm -hmm. and the laws that are in place. This is what this is the reason why this is happening. Mm -hmm. right. And and they will respect you. And that's called key communication. Yes. Right. Making sure that you communicate these things mm -hmm. because I think a lot of times when persons discipline they fail to communicate and mm -hmm. so there is that yeah, okay, why is it that I'm being disciplined or reprimanded for this when I don't know why. You know, and so key communication mm -hmm. is key based on what it is mm -hmm. that you said mm -hmm. very Absolutely. important. Mm -hmm. you, you wanted to I say I totally agree with you. Uh -huh. I agree with basically everyone everyone has to say. I am a law of a person I have to talk. Mm -hmm. so, if I notice someone acting out, I want to I'm going to try to meet you where you are to try and understand. Because some persons, when they act out, it's like a whole lot more mm -hmm. than what you think it is. Mm -hmm. You may be thinking it's mm -hmm. just surface, but it's really deep. So sometimes it's really only in terms of sitting down and talking, and talking with like, let's just have an intervention. You mm -hmm. know what's going on with you? So I can find ways of, if it's, whereas I need to step in and assist or I need to seek assistance for you mm -hmm. and let's talk because sometimes like I said in most cases it's personal it's a story it's behind it yeah and they're just acting out for yeah me. so you know sometimes I'll be the one to talk before mm -hmm. I lead a yeah you know yeah, so. uh, well, Ms. Matthews, that's what it should be yeah um, first it, let's say you see somebody come late to work then you don't just put them on a charge you need to probably find out. Mm -hmm. right. Let's say the person is single. You say, okay, they're single. They have no children, but they may have an alien parent home. Mm -hmm. And then they have to deal with that person. That person might be bedridden. Right. So you find out. Mind you, say that's no excuse. Mm -hmm. But to him or her, that's important to them. Mm -hmm. So you need to find out, okay, how are we going to address this situation? Right. So if you talk to them and you still see the person, they don't have these issues, but they're still coming late, then you have to 
call them, give them a verbal warning, then you got to go with the letter, then you keep until you get to the Hummer. Mm -hmm. Let the Hummer be the last two <laughs> to use. Yeah. You know, because sometimes, and you can't let emotion get in the way. Mm -hmm. And like AC person said, and she said it rightly so, you have to deal with the facts. And, it, and sometimes you can't deal with, okay, because um, Sergeant Gomez doesn't like Corporal Neely, and every time they cross, there's friction, mm -hmm. right. right? So now S Sergeant Gomez decided to put Neely on the charge. Right. Inspector Pinder is investigating. She needs to get the whole yeah. story. And write. don't just use what Inspector Bar yeah. says because her and Gomez are friends, mm -hmm. and they say, well, you know, Neely was always rude. Because that green yeah. monster called jealousy mm -hmm. can crop in there mm -hmm. because Neely is going somewhere. Neely is at school. She's progressing well. She's doing this. Yeah. And so, as women, we must we must green eye. You know that green eye monster. Yeah. And we we the last to say, um, Inspector Sweeting, on Sunday you play it so beautifully at mm -hmm. the service. You sang so well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take anything yeah. from you. And she deserved it. Give it to her. Mm -hmm. And and so, cause I'm saying. We are sisters, and then you know, you be you have friction, teeth and tongue is harsh, like some of them used to say. Mm -hmm. So, if we all came from different homes, different personalities, you know, somewhere along the line, we're gonna fall out. Mm -hmm. And don't take away that we have different ranks, structure, don't take that away. Mm -hmm. That's the organization, that's the structure. We need that. So, Savannah, Subs, Constable, and I'm a deputy commissioner. There's no reason why we can't have a relationship, mm -hmm. be friends. She's, but she knows that I'm like a role model right, or yeah. m mother to her or big sister mm -hmm. to her. And so she doesn't cross the line. She's not going to know that you have the deputy commissioner and we went walking together. So she's going to do something mm -hmm. and to get and say, oh, are you the deputy? No, mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass all those um, warning and verbal. I'm going to pull out the hump for her mm -hmm. because she should know better. <laughs> Don't put me in that position. <laughs> you yes, understand? Right, Don't do that to me. I was just going to ask, as the, the, the deputy commissioner in charge of discipline, how is it that you do it? You spoke about the commissioner having to say, you know what, ease up a bit. Yeah, but oh, commissioner, yeah. let me tell you. So. <laughs> Um, I'm still learning. I learned right. from him because he'll say, "No, don't, don't get it now." Because some days I say, "So, are you putting on your commissioner cap, or are you wearing your pastor collar?" He said, "No, Marty, I bring no collar today. <laughs> I have the commissioner." So you know that days when he say, um, "But let me tell you, what about mm -hmm. him? He is firm, mm -hmm. but he'll always say, I'm gonna give him a second chance.'" Mm -hmm. And so many days I sit in headquarters, watch him give people second and third mm -hmm. chance, and they mess up. And so what you expect what him do to do as a commissioner? Yeah, what, do do? what do you expect him to do? Mm -hmm. He's give you, so he's always say, Maki, patience. So I have a, do not, mm -hmm. a, new, a new definition for patience now. So <laughs> I have a new appreciation for the word patience. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you give people an opportunity, and let's say even if the, they're convicted, sometimes I look at it and I'm like, okay, so by the time we first paying all of this, <laughs> so tell me about this officer. Is he married? He has mm -hmm. children? You know, what is his salary? Because I need to know if I'm yeah. taking $600 from you. Yeah. I need to know, mm -hmm. you know, am I putting you in problem where you now have to compromise yourself? Yeah. To yeah. Put so I'm saying it's a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for me, I believe sitting here as a deputy commissioner responsible for discipline, you must have God. Mm -hmm. yes. You must have God because, but for, 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 if it wasn't for God, where would we be today? Yeah. yeah. But, Did yeah. he give us some second and third chances? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wisdom no? as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because somebody's doing something because you have to look at the reputation of the organization. So you got to know when, when strike that, high. Strike that mm -hmm. balance and when to use the hammer. Mm -hmm. right. Because um, you have to set a precedent. Yeah, we firm, but we're fair. Mm -hmm. And we have to make sure that you give a second chance when you need to. And sometimes um, the commissioner has a way where you have to justify why we should give you a second yeah, chance no. or a third chance. Mm -hmm. And so I don't believe anybody since I was sitting in police headquarters almost two years that anybody can say that they came and they were not given an mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if they were to say that, I don't believe anybody would mm -hmm. agree with them going back and looking at what has been done mm -hmm. over the last two years mm -hmm. with um, our commissioner present at them. Mm -hmm. So firm, but fair. Absolutely. Absolutely. When, when, we, when we're thinking about females in this organization, it is a diverse organization in that 
I, when, I, when I joined, like I said, my son was one and a half years old. Now he's 18 years old. So having to deal with being a, a newly single mother, um, making sure that he was provided for, making sure that I had time for him, being efficient on the job, it was somewhat crazy. Mm -hmm. But thank God for, for compassionate people within this organization. The question that I have is, how is it that we as females in this organization juggle all of that motherhood, um, being efficient on the job, um, making sure that our homes are taken care of, being wives, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. Ms. Ferguson, being wives of police officers at that. I, me and um, Sergeant Gomez was just having this conversation mm -hmm. yesterday because her uh, husband well. is a police officer as well, Ms. Ferguson. And so having to juggle all of that, how do, we, how do you do it? I know it was hard for me. I, I don't know if anybody else could relate to it. Well, I would say this. Being a female police officer mm -hmm. is a big job. Mm -hmm. And then being a female police officer with children, or not only children, a husband, dependents, whatever have you, that's a big job. Mm -hmm. And so parenting alone is difficult. And when you add, when you add a badge to that, Say I'm a police officer and a parent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Many days I ask myself, like, how do you <laughs> remain <laughs> You know, working. I'm in investigations. Mm -hmm. My husband is in investigations. We have three children and all under the age of twelve. Mm -hmm. So Hallelujah. it gets wow. crazy. I must say it gets really crazy. <laughs> but right, so okay. you have to strike a balance in your life. You must strike that strategy. Mm -hmm. That's critical to manage your time. That's key. Mm -hmm. So I find myself, when I leave work sometimes, you know, in investigations, there's never really a set time for getting off. Mm -hmm. So my mind, I, my, my husband always tells me I like tunnel vision, one drop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I get my Jeep, straight on, mm -hmm. straight to homework, get out your homework, yeah, that get that mother's mode, that like mother's you mode, yeah. automatically mm -hmm. be ready to just switch roles. And so it is taxing. It is difficult. Mm -hmm. I would not sit in and say that I don't have meltdowns. Mm -hmm. but, you know, you have to try balance everything. Find time for yourself. My time for myself. I don't. I'm not at will to just leave or go mm -hmm. out. But I'd lock myself in the bathroom sometimes. I'll be in there for an hour. How long? Oh, wow. Just okay. probably scroll into my phone. That's that's my me time. Uh -huh. You know. So you have to. You have to create a balance in your life. Mm -hmm. You have to make time for yourself. That's critical mm -hmm. for mental health, personal health. You have to find time for that. Mm -hmm. So time management is key. Mm -hmm. yes. That's my mm -hmm. way of juggling, you know. And then sometimes, too, for persons who may not be able to or can't do all those stuff that I just said, you have to be able to know like the support that mm -hmm. you have and utilize mm -hmm. it efficiently don't overdo it mm -hmm. but you know <laughs> in the job it calls for us sometimes getting called abruptly to mm -hmm. come and work so you have to have mm -hmm. the person maybe your mommy maybe your dad a yeah. credible person because if it's not a credible person mm -hmm. and if you have any children yeah i come in <laughs> but you must be able to find that person, have that good child, I'm sorry, that good support system uh -huh. to help you. And if not, sometimes it only takes going to your supervisor mm -hmm. and explain, well, you know, this is what's going on with me. Don't just be quick to assume that. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling them because they understand no way, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. communication is key. Yeah. Management is key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I want to piggyback on what um, Ms. Ms. Gomez said about having the support system. I call my support system Auntie Debbie, mm -hmm. and I, throughout our careers, um, she's been the person that we've been able to drop our three children to on a consistent basis. You, you, you were spot on. It, the person has to be dependable. Mm -hmm. So my support system is called Auntie Debbie. She's off um, um, our Malcolm Road, and that's where my kids. And when, we, when they weren't home, mm -hmm. that's where they were. When we had to work the junk canoes, because both of us yeah, had to work the junk oh, canoes, goodness. and both of us had to work the operations. Because we um, forged such a good relationship with my, she's my actual Auntie Debbie. Mm -hmm. We could call up any time and say, Auntie Debbie, we, we, we need to drop the kids off because we have to go to work. Or Auntie Debbie, um, we have to come a bit later because mm -hmm. she kept them after school. Mm -hmm. 
um, we have to come a bit later because we both had work um, extra duty. He mm -hmm. was in, in drug enforcement. So any time there was a matter that came up, it meant that we were actually um, bound to be the work. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also had this thing where I needed to show any Debbie how grateful I was. Yeah. Yeah. And so even today, our kids are almost 30, um, almost 26, and almost n uh, uh, 19 years of age. If there's anything, I still have our Debbie in the loop. Mm -hmm. If there's a trouble, our Debbie is traveling with mm -hmm. us. Because I'm so appreciative yeah. of what she did for us to get to where we yeah. are. Because if she hadn't done it, I wouldn't yeah. be an ATP sitting here, yeah. and he would not be a chief superintendent. Mm -hmm. And I recall, I, I really want to talk about Miss Neely, because I recall a project days and our police month. Mm -hmm. Miss Neely have a sister. I stayed home, mm -hmm. and we had a colleague in there that had two children mm -hmm. as well. And so I told her about Annie Debbie, uh -huh. and her sister uh -huh. became Annie Debbie to that colleague. <laughs> <laughs> and so she would drop. We, we would be working uh -huh. or after school because her children were small. Mm -hmm. The daycare was closed. They Andy went to, to her Andy Debbie. Right. And that's how it worked for. And mm -hmm. even after projects were finished, uh -huh. if you ask now, she could still carry her children mm -hmm. there and she would take care of them. Wow. And so those officers and persons uh, and women in general, just find someone yeah. that can support you. Yeah. You know, someone that you can trust mm -hmm. because they will help you mm -hmm. with this this burden you yeah. the same to bear. And shortly, I guarantee you that they will be mm -hmm. 18, yeah. 25, yeah. and 30. Well, enjoy this. Enjoy, enjoy the this now. Uh -huh. Enjoy the process. <laughs> Let me put in a plug here. That's so. Um, my auntie Debbie was daddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to tell him who was daddy. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, you know. So my my yeah, auntie Debbie was, was my a police officer. He was yeah. a police officer, yeah. and even now, <laughs> and so he and my son, they are best friends. Yes. And that was he was he mommy too. But you know, daddy yeah. was that support mm -hmm. system for me. So he's the Annie Debbie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, just to add, I was, I was about to say what ACB Ferguson said to mm -hmm. Sergeant Gomez. In short order, I would be out in the yeah. Yeah. But yeah, as indeed. for me, I experienced the same thing being in the police force. And, but, and being in CID, I had my daughter mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was very demanding, mm -hmm. but I always struck the balance and I had a very good support system. Yes. Yeah, you and so that. now I am reaping the benefits. Mm -hmm. She's now 25 years old. Wow. And so I have lots of time. Uh -huh. now. Okay. <laughs> and I'll just uh, touch on my sister while Miss Ferguson beat me to the punch. Yeah. But um, I can guarantee you at 2 30, my sister's going to call me. Mm -hmm. Time to pick up that Jay. Yeah. Uh -huh. She calls me. Oh, Casing milk running low. This pump is yep. running low. You pay a school fee this month. You pay a school fee yet? Uh -huh. She's an awesome support. I tell you, we each one homework already done. done. Projects already I done. I, I just it. have to. But I very each one, we have time to log in class. Mm -hmm. Log in and go to school. She keeps my son until my class time is finished. And then he's on to bed. I don't I really love that. It's, but sometimes I catch myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd also like to add that. Um, you know, sometimes everybody stuck with their family, their immediate family being a part of that support system, but we forget to realize that our co-workers could even be, yeah. they mm -hmm. usually be our support system. Because mm -hmm. I have some of my co-workers, listen, they be calling me, transfer mm -hmm. go, what time to pick up. Mm -hmm. they, you know, because sometimes you being a single mother, yeah. you, you, you find yourself having so much to do. And so you find persons right here in the job who are, who, who are able to assist. Mm -hmm. And also my daughter, she's a cadet. And mm -hmm. because, you know, persons, other police officers have to, to pick up, we, we decided to do a, um, a carpool. A carpool. Right. Yeah. So on certain days, okay. we would carpool and pick up a drop-off, mm -hmm. and we had to work out and cut our schedule and stuff. So it, you have to find um, creative ways in, in, in making support. it happen. Mm -hmm. so yeah. We find it on both sides. Mm -hmm. okay. Not speaking as a mother, but just speaking from being a young female on the organization, I feel as if even your personal life is strike a balance yeah. when it comes to 
you know, we work shifts. Sometimes our, our um, schedules are very hectic. You have to find time for God, first of all. Mm -hmm. Find time to go into the house. Find time to give him praise. Secondly, you have to find time to your family. Find time for your friends. You know, mm -hmm. because mental health is very important. On a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. basis, we encounter a lot of things, you know. So, you have to find time and strike the balance like everyone has said. Mm -hmm. Let me just add to that as well. Uh, I know I heard you speak, speaking about uh, persons who assist all of that, you know, all of that helps, all of that take away the strain or the worry. When you go to work, you could function because you know, hey, my kids are in good hands, you know. So persons like that, we need to really appreciate mm -hmm. and, you know, they make our jobs easy, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's I wanted to say, oh. too, yeah. As a young officer in job, my husband was a police officer. But what happened is the organization did it so that I worked nine to five, mm -hmm. and he worked chef. And so there were times when both of us would work nine to five. It wasn't nine to five because when you're in CID, you know nine, nine to five. Yeah. That's only on the paper. <laughs> so I found myself, even though I work in white collar crime and commercial crime in CID here in Nassau, I would find myself at 2 a.m. with a rape victim or child was molested, mm -hmm. and I'm in Princess Margaret, and so I have to call and say, hey, I can't pick up the baby, mm -hmm. and so I'm picking up my child 3 a.m. in the morning oh. to go home, and you remember now, you still have to be up and back to get to work for 8.30, mm -hmm. 9 o'clock the next day, and so I'm saying to the females, young females who are up, you have a family, it's important that you find a balance, and so having, whether this person is another colleague, like some um, ACP person uh, alluded to with um, Carl Neely, that's very important. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a family member or somebody else, you, have, you need that support. Right. But what, what, what I found too with, with, with my young children, what you have to, okay, I had two girls first, the boy came late, but so I sat here so that I know what to do when I went to the food store and I buy meat at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. I package them, season them, put date on them. So when I do that kitchen sweep in the morning, after breakfast, you just drop it in the zinc to turn on when you get back mm -hmm. home because you're gonna fix the pan, throw the meat in the baker, and you're gonna do all these other stuff. So you remember now, you, you walk across the threshold and you're not a, a police no more. You now become a wife and a mm -hmm. mom, or you become a, a mom, mm -hmm. or you're a daughter who needs to get something done for a healing parent who's bedridden. So it's a lot of stuff and it's very demanding. And then when you are being a student in that, mm -hmm. yep. because initially when I went to, after I transferred to Grand Bahama, um, well, the deputy commissioner at that time, I wouldn't call his name, he said, um, he looked at my husband, he said, um, you go back home to Grand Bahama, so <clears throat> call your parents and let them know you're coming back. And then he looked at me and he said, and you ask what saying. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was almost as if I was insignificant, mm -hmm. but I was the couple at the time. My husband was still a principal. Mm -hmm. So we went back to Grand Bahama, and then his parents and family were there. But then I was, because I worked in CID, let me just say this, um, the females, I was very skeptical about leaving my two girls with anybody because yeah. of all those sex matters I yeah. used to do with in CID. Yeah. So I didn't trust yeah. nobody. Mm -hmm. I didn't trust the Sunday yeah. school teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. I, and and, and I'm telling you, and, and you, because of you working and doing an investigation, mm -hmm. and then you found where boys were molested. Yes. So I did not trust mm -hmm. nobody. Mm -hmm. So wherever I went, even when I played softball for a while, then I said, you know, that's enough. And then I started playing tennis, and I said, that's it. I took my girls with me everywhere. Mm -hmm. If you went in the back trunk of my car, you found water, soap, towel, food, soup. <laughs> Everything yeah. was there because I, mm -hmm. it, that was just, you know, my husband said, you're talking to him. So I said, you know, listen, and I, um, so please, women, I'm talking to you today. It's good to have an open relationship mm -hmm. and conversation with your children, mm -hmm. boy or yeah. girl. Yeah. And talk to them so yeah. people don't take advantage of them. Yeah. Say to that, what is it? And even if you're sending a colleague to pick up the child, be careful yeah. mm -hmm. with that person. Yes. So I'm saying, mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that you get <laughs> over real, this, this but I'm, I true, want yeah. you to understand this because children are a gift to you from God mm -hmm. and you are responsible to make mm -hmm. sure that they protect it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I used to talk to my children and sometimes, you know, because of because of cases you dealt with, you heard mm -hmm. what was said yeah. or what the perpetrator said to the, mm -hmm. the victim. So I said, now don't worry them. 
saying that they can get you no mommy can get them first mm -hmm. so there's no secret the only secret is between you mm -hmm. and mommy mm -hmm. not you mommy daddy you mommy and this one you and mommy mm -hmm. that's the secret right there so we talk about it in, in let them know that body and even you know even when we went in the schools we used to tell them where well, you could make an x on your body with your heart it's mm -hmm. taboo body and you check it your back here and cross it nobody's supposed to touch that mm -hmm. your body is the temple of the lord and it's important, I know, we, we more than now, Sunday school is important. Yep. Don't stray away from the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible is a blueprint that was set up for Jericho. We have the commission's policing plan for every day. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the blueprint. Mm -hmm. Don't stray away from that because you can get caught up mm -hmm. and it's unfair to your children. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to be careful. But even now, I feel good. I'm here and I'm so on. You know, I get a time like, oh, I can do this. Much. But my me time is walking. Mm -hmm. Or if I want time, I just go out to the tennis court. And so even when I was angry, so you don't, don't get on a charge, and get in, I go and hit the softball. Mm -hmm. And I used to hit that ball. I'm Chief Super then Mary Mitchell, and I used to play on softball team. And she bat first, or I bat first a second. Because she said, you got to get on. Oh, I get on and you we can bring us around because that was my way. Mm -hmm. Then when I went to grandma, I worked for a little while and then I said, no, nah, because I started to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And so I played tennis. And so I used the tennis and I said that was my supervisor head. I walked that good. And so <laughs> instead of being within mountain or and then get put on the charge. And so <laughs> you had to find an outlet. You had to work these things. You had to work these things out, you know. And sometimes I live in the Bible and, and you know the Bible said um, love your enemies, yeah. you know, and, and everything in thanks. So those things I had a difficulty with, like, <laughs> don't give them that I you back to me. You I saw him like, Lord, like, what you talking hey. about? Like, you see what she did, or you okay. see what he did, and what he's saying, Lord, you know, and I, and I didn't get no promotion this time around, Lord. And he's saying, But it huh. made you who you are. But it made right. you, it all came together. And so, like, he's saying, going back to school, yeah. really, yeah. it's not easy. And I felt, I felt, Listen, you know, you fell asleep on your laptop. When I open my laptop, you know, you wake up and you see mm -hmm. the whole page with Y K P P L L oh, that's all these other letters. And then you have to delete and then start again. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying to you, you could do it. Don't give up. Yeah. You know what the goal is? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all a process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't give up. And if you feel like giving up, call me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we, I, I have two more important questions, but before, I know we could talk all day, but before we get into those questions, I, uh, Sergeant Sass has been waiting for a while to serenade us, oh, and wow. so without further ado, oh That's my goodness, with his soprano <laughs> Sass, he is going to serenade us today on Women, International Women's Day. Yeah.
better play. You better play. Listen. Wonderful. Oh, oh my goodness. Wonderful. Beautiful. 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 Oh my goodness. I could wow. listen to that all day. All day. <laughs> Keep yeah. it on Sunday. Yes. 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 Music yes. is food to the soul, eh? Yeah. 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 What is that? So music, music is food to the soul. Yes, yes. It inspires, you know. Yeah. Tell us, tell us, back. Tell us, tell other persons who are listening. What um, instrument you play and why is music is so dear to your heart? Tell us. Share uh, I play the clarinet in the Beast Band. Um, I also, I was the first female conductor in the entire force. I, I, I now sit in the annals of history, like yourself, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was the first female inspector, first female conductor. Wow. I, I, and some other first I want to aspire mm -hmm. to, you know. Um, music is, you know, it, it, it really hits home for me. I'm um, coming in a family, being raised with a family of singers. Uh, my brother, he sings as well. He plays instrument. Um, I was taught the clarinet in a church mm -hmm. at a very young age, and that's uh, from there I was I played in school, and after that I seek uh, the assistance of the Royal Bahamas Police Force Band, where I presently serve right now. It has been an awesome experience. We travel, mm -hmm. get to, to 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 see other cultures, and. By saying that we just, you know, arrived from Dubai. Dubai. Um, well, I, 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 <laughs> I'm taking a bath. I never pictured myself having the opportunity mm -hmm. to travel that far abroad. And it opened my eyes, you know, to different cultures, how they operate. So I'd say travel, travel more. That's my advice. Mm -hmm. Travel, get to see how people live, mm -hmm. their culture, mm -hmm. what they eat, what they wear. It's something that, you know... It's very difficult, you know, we're born on an island and certain things go a certain way. So it's good to travel abroad to see other cultures. Um, yeah. What was one of your most memorable trips? Where and why? I would say my most memorable trip was Bermuda. Mm. Um, apparently, yeah, we spent, I think it was a week, a little over a week, but what happened was, while we were there, a hurricane came. Oh. We were supposed to leave that same day. Mm -hmm. So it, it cost our trip to, to um, go back at least three days. So that was, that was always memorable for me. Mm -hmm. At that time of Bermuda, hurricane, we were, we were afraid. We were afraid. We was, you know, we just everybody's praying that everything goes well. And the Bermuda people, they, they're awesome people. We learn a lot um, in terms of their culture. Ginger. Ginger is something they like. Ginger in if they could put ginger in water, <laughs> they would put ginger. Everything, the food, the drinks, the lemonade, everything, and everything was taken care of by that by the government. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that stood out to me. Um, also, another trip to Washington. I've been to so many places. I could talk for days, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know, I just give God thanks for the yeah, opportunity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, to actually travel and see how things go open up my mind to different things um our trip to washington they have something called the shriners lodge it was a big parade you know on the streets you perform the different bands perform and something about you know with the police band mm -hmm. we, we we let you have it <laughs> so when we stepped up there man the people whoo, they was in awe they were blown away they were dancing and just enjoying enjoying the trip. So mm -hmm. those two really stood out to me as a trip where I could say, okay, this happened, this occurred. And so right. you want to put in a plug for the Urban Renewal Band or any young person out there watching or uh, um, parents okay. with music? Um, I would say one thing about music, it disciplines you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, but it just you know, you, you sit there with the mindset that, hey, mm -hmm. read notes and perform. For example, a clarinet player, she has to, or he has to move his fingers at the same time while comprehending reading the notes. So all that brings discipline and it adds as a, for a person, you know, who wanted to join the band or whatever, I would say to them, you, you have to have a love for music. 
to do well it. You have to have that love to go over that barrier. You have to have that love for your horn, for, for music itself. Um, I would also say to a musician, better yourself. Listen to other music. Listen to other persons who, mm-hmm. was, who perform. Someone who you can look up to mm-hmm. and aspire mm-hmm. to get to the particular level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, before we go, I have I have one more question, uh, Miss Markey. When I am sitting in the presence of of my police royalty, when we talk about females, both you and Miss Ferguson, Miss Porter, um, do we? I know that Miss Markey you would have served as the acting commissioner of police in November, if I'm not mistaken. October, October, November, December, three times. Yeah. October, November, December. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, and so we, you've sat at that capacity. Do you see, um, as females, the glass ceiling being broken any time in our lifetime as a, a female becoming the commissioner of police of this organization that's been around from 1840, 182 years? Do, we, do you foresee a female ever becoming the commissioner of, of police within this organization? I, I, I'll start off. <laughs> it is attainable. Uh-huh. And I think very shortly. Um, mm. I, I, we, we sit here today um, celebrating 182 years. Yes. Um, they started off with, 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 with 16. 16, 16 men. Yes. And in 2022, we stand at 642 females, mm. which is like 25 Twenty-four point five percent of of women mm-hmm. in the, in the organization, um, uh, compared to a man. We joined in nineteen sixty-five, and we had to six sixty-four. We had to go up the ranks. We had yeah. to climb those ranks. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of women to thank, who bore a lot for us to be yes. where we yes. are. Yes, yes. you yes. know. Yes. And so the women of yesterday. Um, those first six, starting off with the first six, mm-hmm. and then um, some that we can now recognize in our time, mm-hmm. uh, the Miss Colebrooks and the Allardyce mm-hmm. Strong, uh, the Elaine Sands, mm-hmm. uh, the Carolyn mm-hmm. Moe, the Esmela yes. Dave, yes. myself, yes. Miss, Miss Markey, yes. we're all building mm-hmm. this crescendo, I would say, <laughs> for you yes. who are coming behind. And so I think it's important uh, you asked that question. I think it's important as women that we help to yes. to build yeah. each other, yeah. to build each other because yes. it's coming. Yes. And if we continue to pull down each other, it's going to take a longer time yes. for yes. our first female to get there. Um, mm-hmm. are the commissioner of police and the government as a whole has already set the the, the thing. Miss mm-hmm. right. um um Miss Miss Paul is the OC. Of the Cable Beach Division, yes, she you is. have Miss Miss uh, Miss Linda Moxie <laughs> as the OC of the Eastern Division. Yes. You have Janet McKenzie mm-hmm. as the OC of the Western Division. Mm-hmm. I, we have the woman in charge of the finances. That's the Chief yes. Superintendent. Yes. We have a Chief Superintendent in charge of all the tourists mm-hmm. on the street. Mm-hmm. I, we have them in Grand Bahama. Yes, we have Miss We have her. Yes, she can in New York. And the first female as. Um, also, oh, Church of, of CIA. Yes, yes. We have we we have in Bahama. We have Miss Amelie, who's holding her own. Mm-hmm. We also have Miss Teresi Depender and Anne Neely. Mm-hmm. All of these ladies are those who I did not call. These are people that we are hoping to help get to that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ladies, it depends on us. Yeah, right. it yes. depends on us. I I all I all I wish to do. If you ask me what legacy I want to leave behind, I just want to push you others to where mm-hmm. they were because mm-hmm. that's right because i'm so grateful for yeah. the men and women that pushed me to where i am mm-hmm. today and mm-hmm. that that commissioner's post is attainable but yeah. we have to make ourselves ready mm-hmm. we cannot say oh it's time for a female commissioner if we've not ready that well yes. and yes. we've seen it through um the fact that our ladies are going back to school mm-hmm. um they're in these positions where they're commanding the post mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're doing well at it. Don't use your, mm-hmm. don't use women, being a woman as an excuse. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is an equal opportunity <laughs> employer. I know. Don't use being mm-hmm. a female as an excuse. Mm-hmm. 
All right. I, I just came out of training. I, I just was responsible for 28 of them. Mm -hmm. They carried a big water bottle just like the males. Uh -huh. And they did the same thing mm -hmm. because they're aspiring for the same mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. And so we have to ready ourselves mm -hmm. for that position that is coming shortly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's my five cents. I would say that the glass has already been broken. Miss <laughs> Laura Mackey, you've been a good example for females up and coming. So thank you. Thank you for that. And kudos to you mm -hmm. as we move forward in this operation. Mm -hmm. Organization, may, sorry. Yes. <laughs> may add. Well, that sitting has been broken. Mrs. Mackey has held that commission of police post mm -hmm. on three different occasions. Three. So if she has held it, it's attainable. It's attainable yeah. by a female. Yeah. It's attainable. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we just need to encourage each other and so let's be an inspiration to each other. So that's right. Propel each other mm -hmm. in that vein. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. and, and be excited for each other yeah. when they attain Man. things. Be excited. Celebrate. We have to celebrate. We have to celebrate. celebrate each yes. other. Yes. We have to yes. celebrate each other. Yeah. And run your race, eh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Run your own race. Just you need to learn how to just motivate each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it is. And about. unify and, and unify and, yeah. and be as one. Let's be seen as one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I that's why um when um Inspector Pinder called and she said um she wanted to interview me for International Women's Day. And so I I threw a curveball back at her and I said, Did you notice that women is not singular? It's a Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so I told her I would do it. This is what you wanted. And, and we would come under the veranda here. And mm -hmm. then um, A.C.P. Ferguson, when I told her, because she was away, when she came back, she said, with the wind. And I said, like, God, you can fix the wind. Uh -huh. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes we, we doubt God. Yeah. yeah. We, we really don't, a lot of, we just talk about this mm -hmm. relationship, but we don't know who God is. Mm -hmm. Put God to the test. That's what yeah. he said, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and remind him of his promises. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying to you. The glass, I'm seeing it's been shattered, but now yeah. there's somebody who should be there, mm -hmm. can serve a turn before they move on. And I, I'm someone, I'm like, my husband, he would say, he said, you acting commissioner, he said, you have to take this thing serious. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah. And I said, yeah, it's a serious position. Yeah. One I didn't take lightly, mm -hmm. because um, when the commission said, Maki, I go, um, you have to be here, you acting as commissioner. I said, huh? <laughs> I said, because he, I didn't know, he had said it, but then things had changed mm -hmm. and everything was going on there. He said, you can be Christian. I said, okay. He said, you can be all right. You can do this, you know, Maki. You can do this. You, you just, and he said, do this, you do this. You, you can be yeah, okay. Thank you. Now he mm -hmm. said, now, Maki, whatever you write, what you sign off on, when you act in a commissioner, I can't change that. <laughs> I said, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm serious. On a serious note, it's a very serious position. You don't take lightly. Mm -hmm. And ACP person said something. Don't let it be a token. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let it be a position where you um, qualify to mm -hmm. hold the position. Mm -hmm. no because um, with your con male compound there, right. we couldn't do this without them. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I want to send a shout out to all our men because when I told them we were doing something, they said, hey, when are we going to ever do something for the yeah. men? And I'm <laughs> like, every day. So, so I, I'm saying, <laughs> did you say, you know, just had something uh, uh, last year? And I, said, <laughs> I said, yes, we celebrated. Um, the women's 57 right. anniversary right. and the organization and so he said well so what about men i said you all have to look on the calendar and find out where these things are and celebrate <laughs> yes. yourself yes. and then we'll join, we'll join you yes. guys and yes. but you have to um, catch up with it and he said but anyhow
It's good. And I'm saying that we need to look mm -hmm. among ourselves and encourage other. And sometimes that person around the table, you can, like we're all sitting around, and then you have like, we call it the, in the, the textbook, call it the invisible employee. Mm -hmm. And so we, have, we want to do something, and you hear from everybody, but sometimes because um, Sweden is not talkative, mm -hmm. you don't hear what she says, mm -hmm. but she's that person who holding the missing piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. to complete the photo. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, you know, hear from everybody and mm -hmm. all of you, um, Ferguson, you did, Porter, all of you were talking about communication, talking, you know, helping each other, and that's what I believe it's all about. Mm -hmm. We're in this organization, and, and we're the primary law enforcement agency of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? We mm -hmm. are the primary and because defense forces there, but they were born out of us. Yeah. I think they're celebrating 41 or 42 years. Mm -hmm. So they, they weren't even long enough, around long enough. As women were mm -hmm. in the Royal Bahamas Police mm -hmm. Force, because we were here for 57 years. And don't let nobody fool you. The women have a part to play in the yeah, organization. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Because we bring something mm -hmm. different to the table. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the mother's bit. Maybe the way we do, and I believe we, we, we can organize it. You know, if the commission is talking, I like to talk, you know, the commissioner Paul wrote, if he's talking and you interrupt him, he's like, what I say? I what can't I say? take it. <laughs> and so he said, you know, I can't do two gum and walk. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the females, we multitask. Yeah. We are mothers, whether we are mothers, married, or we are single. Mm -hmm. We have children. We are in church choir, or we are in the church group. We are in some civic organization. We attend to our parents. We, we are friends. We, I mean, we like everything. Mm -hmm. So if your child falls down, you're the doctor. If someone needs somebody to talk to, you're the psychologist, mm -hmm. psychiatrist, or somebody that they need to talk to. So we do everything. Mm -hmm. and so you have to give God thanks that we still cute. sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Know, and, you know, it, it's a lesson. So I'm saying we should be a friend to each other. Mm -hmm. And um, the way has been paid for us, there's a um, retired couple down in South Andrews. I can activate. Um, after her husband died, um, he's a retired chief superintendent. I mean, chief inspector Morris. And I didn't know that Miss Morris, um, mm -hmm. Leona, I think is her name, down mm -hmm. in South Andrews. And I didn't even know that she had served for 13 years, left as a corporal. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we only found up. And, and, and when I, I, I heard that I talked to her, and I said to her, and I said, I want to thank you. She said, for what, Miss Mackey? I said, I want to thank you because I'm standing on your shoulder. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and I just felt led to do it. And I yeah. believe as women, we could do so much more. Mm -hmm. That's why I was asking Superintendent Donald, hey, let's get out there. Let's find out these organizations so we could go to conference. We yes. can improve ourselves yes. and all that. And then I, I'm, I'm a little passionate about our colleagues who, who, who passed last year. Even last year in the midst of COVID, and they left young farmers yeah. behind. We should mm -hmm. take time to reach out to them to yeah. say, hello, mm -hmm. how you doing? Mm -hmm. And I did it last week or two weeks ago, and I was so shocked that um, Bailey, my, um, mm -hmm. Bailey, his mm -hmm. wife sent a picture of their second son, because two of them were only 11, and he's dressed up in police, police uniform, and he had on his dad's side. number. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, and, and when I called it the day when I did it, the Holy Spirit prompted me that morning mm -hmm. to do it. I sent it out to like six or seven of them who I could remember was in the phone. More of them in the phone, but I just couldn't remember the names. And I quickly did it before coming to work. And then she said that was his sixth, six month death anniversary mm -hmm. the same day. He's been gone that long time and by yeah. far. Yeah, and, and yeah. you know, he's music. Yeah. And so everybody who talked about Bailey, everybody said music. And so mm -hmm. Sweden here yeah, now, every time I hear the name Sweden, I'm going to put music to you because mm -hmm. you sing yeah. it. And so for me, I'm sitting here and I'm so, so, I'm proud of all of you. Mm -hmm. And then to hear what she's saying and talking about music, um, um, travel and everything, we all have a role to play. Yeah. And so I, I, I get a little upset. I'm off the course, but I'm, I get a little upset when I hear somebody say, oh, the people in payoff say, wait, nine to five, they don't know. And this, no, if they don't shuffle the paper, how is yourself yeah. going to catch the bind? Yeah. Everybody you, has a role in fun. Yes. If you see us sitting in the church Sunday morning and everybody knows to sit, if you don't have a protocol team, mm -hmm. you're going to have chaos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want us to learn how to appreciate everybody for who they are, where they are, and the contribution that they are making. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I like to see, Gomez, that you're in sexual offenses. Uh, where you in CID, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the sacrifice that you're making. And I can't get to get the family island. Right. And, and, and they're my heart. 
Yeah, the from the island is dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. So we have like um, 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 ASP, Elder, Russell, Russell. And then we have the inspector Simmons, Simmons and Andrews, and then we have some two inspectors. Down uh, and make one uh, and female. We have we have an, um, two inspectors in Luthra. Yes. Yeah. Taylor and Aubrey. Mm -hmm. and then we have some other uh, sergeants around the family. Island. And so sometimes it's good to pick up the phone and call them or say something. Mm -hmm. And don't use the excuse that you can't find a number. You could find anything mm -hmm. <laughs> and do anything if you set your mind. Yeah. So it's good to find. What I'm saying is not only the females, but the officers. You remember that they're out on the family. Island. Some of them leave their family here in Nassau or they lead them on Grand Bahama or wherever. And so they miss their child mm -hmm. first step. They miss graduation. Mm -hmm. They miss all these things. Mm -hmm. And so they make a sacrifice to their country. So mm -hmm. let's not take this lightly, yeah. what we do as police women in mm -hmm. the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Mm -hmm. Don't take it lightly, what yes. we do. We are unique. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's my thing. Don't be our special mm -hmm. in God's eyes. And we are unique Absolutely. to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your words, Ms. Maki. I think you've said it all. Anything that we could I said, Ms. Porter, you wanted to, to say something? No, I just wanted to say that what much of what Ms. Maki said reminded me of the sermon on Sunday. Uh -huh. It brought back what he was saying about, you know, in our position, we should not, you know, um, take it for granted yeah. or, mm -hmm. like, we can search ourselves mm -hmm. and our yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But I just want to say, as females, we um, need to have oneness, and we need to be more together. Mm -hmm. That's my word to the females mm -hmm. in the board. Mm -hmm. And I, after speaking in the last thing you spoke about with Maki, I felt I must highlight Chief Superintendent Shantan Old. Sure. Reason being, I have had in my time working on the police force, I've had the privilege of working on the two female OCEs. One being Miss Delmita Turnquist, who passed away, okay. and Miss mm -hmm. Shanta Knowles. And despite Miss Knowles being transferred to the family island, every, I don't know who else. I hope I'm not getting you any problems. <laughs> every morning, I look forward to, and I receive a text, a WhatsApp from Knowles. She'll send messages like, you're beautiful, have a great day. Like, just inspirational stuff she mm -hmm. sends. Like, you up, yeah. If you feel in some type of way, and you mm -hmm. just open a phone. Mind you, sometimes, when people send your phone, you'll be like, this is these people piling up my phone. But <laughs> it's inspiration. Mm -hmm. It's inspiring. Mm -hmm. So I just want to highlight her, because she is consistent with it, mm -hmm. you know. And she was a great boss. Mm -hmm. I, I think all of you have said it well. Um, and before we, we end the segment, the special segment of, of Clock Talk this afternoon, again, thank you, Ms. Markey, for your wisdom in trying to, or I shouldn't even say trying, unifying us as females on this day um, that we celebrate as International Women's Day. Thank you so much um, for your vision. And I'm sure that we had a lot of women who are tuned in, police officers. I pray that you would have taken heed to whatever information has been disclosed today as to how it is that we must move going forward. In, we, are, we, we are the future, and we are our chair leaders. We have to chair, we have to continue to chair each other on, make sure that we are that the, the pillar of strength that we need within this organization, this male charge organization. And so I thank you so much, Ms. Ferguson, for being here as well, um, Ms. Porter, for being here. We stand on your shoulders, us as, as um, female officers within the organization. Uh, we stand on your shoulders, and we thank you for being that example for us within this organization. Um, and I thank God for all of you, and I, I pray that God will continue to strengthen and keep all of you as we move forward within this um, organization and throughout this year and police month. We look forward to the activities. And we also want to thank our commissioner for Absolutely. honestly giving us this platform mm -hmm. where we are able to express ourselves and unify. We thank him so much for his vision as well. Um, we want to thank our executive producer in person of Inspector Dwayne Mackey. Uh, excuse me. Love you on camera. <laughs> 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 thank
thank you so much. <laughs> Our um, chief executive producer is the person of Chief Superintendent Anthony Ball. Our um, photographer, he's waiting. Yes, and the person of Mr. Lorenzo. Um, let me, Joseph Lorenzo um, McKenzie, thank you so much, sir. Uh, Corporal Neely, yes, I'm, uh, Sergeant um, Sands, thank you so much. Yes. Corporal yes. Neely, behind the scenes as well. We have Corp, uh, Sergeant Kalma, who works tirelessly. Mm. Yeah, and, and thank you for your beautiful arrangement, Kalma. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> you and um, Lauriston. And all of the females out there, happy International Women's Day. Thanks so much for tuning in. May God keep blessed and keep you always. Good afternoon.